BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. We are living in a time like no other in history. But fortunately for us, God wrote it down all in His prophecies what would happen next. Find out what prophecies came true this week, ripped straight from the headlines. Verily I say unto you, the only way to rightly understand prophecy is from a messianic Hebrew roots perspective, for without the roots the tree is dead. Stay tuned for the Prophecy News Headline Show, The Remnant's Call. Welcome to The Remnant's Call, the Sledgehammer Show, where prophecy, politics, religion, the straight truth, the Sledgehammer Show comes right to you through the application on your phone, through your computer, and maybe one day Roku. We're working on all sorts of different ways. Vimeo, all oh, crazy, Facebook, all oh, massive crazy things to get the Sledgehammer Show out. Let me introduce myself before I get blow up my head like I do each and every week with these topics. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman from Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation where Jew and Gentile worship Yeshua, the Messiah, as one people. Why this show is different is because Beth Gleam Messianic Congregation is 100% legalistic. See, the church can't really talk about these issues because all these, you know, a gay person would say to them is, well, you're eating a ham sandwich while you're saying I'm going to hell. Aren't you going to hell for eating a ham sandwich and putting up a Christmas tree and coloring Easter eggs and, you know, all sorts of silly stuff like that? And the answer would be yes. So here, you got four Jews and maybe eight opinions. All right. Today, what we're going to be doing is on show number SH231, 231, Ravel, 231 shows. We started out on the radio, now we're podcasting. We're going is wrong is right. And right is wrong, okay? That's one of the most difficult things to do in our society today because everything that was right is now wrong. But William Penn, the guy who's founded Pennsylvania, pretty large state, uh, he said, right is right, even if everyone is against it, and wrong is wrong, even if any everyone is for it, okay? Now, that's the, the basis of our show this week, okay? We're going to be talking about right and wrong. Okay, and let me introduce my panel before I bring them on. Some great men of God, some, some hairy men of God, some not hairy men of God. Okay, we got Rav Will McCubbin of the great state of North Carolina. He's packing, he's packing, he's got the hair on the face, he's got the real beard, and he's carrying a five-shooter with quick loaders on his other side, so in case he has to use more than one bullet, which he most likely won't have to do because he's doesn't, he's Jewish. He doesn't like to waste bullets. So he's gonna sh if he's going to shoot you, he's going to put one in your daggum eye. <laughs> okay, if you're going to shoot your weapon, make sure it's for a good purpose and your life is in danger. Going on to the next, we've got a man with a face for radio, a man who doesn't have much hair on his face, but he's growing it from the top down. Asher's dad, Mr. Rabbi Eduardo Fabuloso Mangeras of the San Dedos Antiguo show that you can hear on Monday nights. Sometimes at 8, sometimes at 9, but sometimes it'll be there, always on the, the, the podcast. And Rabbi in Training, a former pastor himself, the Tabasco sauce man, the hot sauce man. He thinks that these, things, these hot sauces are hot. He starts to sweat after doing it, and Rabbi Will and myself are like, this is not hot. It tastes pretty garbagey, but, you know, okay. Mr. Martin Sanchez of the uh, Chag Messianic Praise and Worship Group. All right. Now, we're going to start off, and we're going to do the show a little bit different, gentlemen. We're going to talk about uh, the scriptures, and and then we're going to bring in the news stories, why we're talking about it, and then bring in, we're going to do a news story about sexuality, not homosexuality, sex education. We're going to bring on a story uh, um, about lying. And then we're going to bring on a story about gun confiscation. This all on the remnants call the Sledgehammer Show. All right. 
So the scripture you know, that was brought to mind for this show, gentlemen and ladies and anybody else that's listening to this show, and if you do, if you're on YouTube, hit the like button. Now also, um, if you don't get to watch it, or if you want driving in your car and you want to listen to it, you can download the application for your phone, the Beth Goyim Live application. And each uh, Thursday, I put this show up on the app so you can listen to it. You can show, listen to it at lunch and then drive people mad crazy at work. So the three topics are sexuality, lying, and gun confiscation. All right. Now, in Isaiah, Yeshiyahu, Prophet Yeshiyahu, Yeshiyahu, that's his Hebrew name, in chapter 5, verse 20, it says, In the end of days, woe to those who call evil good, and good evil, who change darkness into light, and light into darkness, who change bitter into sweet, and sweet into bitter. This prophecy that Yeshayahu wrote, and I highly recommend anybody who's got a Bible, and if you don't have a Bible, send us an email. We'll send you a Bible. Um, when you pick up the book of Isaiah, Rabbo, sorry, again, itch, and these little hairs, forehead's getting bigger, as everybody's noticed. That's why I'm keeping it above the camera <laughs> so you can't see how big the forehead but you get these little hairs that come down it's like ah, what is that okay so heading back to some seriousness sometimes you're gonna you know be too serious um but it says in the end of days evil will be called good and good will be called evil light will be dark and dark will be light and bitter into sweet and sweet into bitter. It is amazing. You know, uh, this this week it'll be the 700th 700 recorded lesson, 700 Shabbats at Beth Goyim. And I could not imagine when Jehovah called me into this ministry, Rabbi. I could not imagine how fast the disintegration has happened. To this nation especially over the last um eight years you know with the other disgusting president this guy's pretty good okay uh but obama what a disgusting piece of garbage okay but each day in the news okay now one thing that we're looking at is social media every idiot can have their own opinion and um, Yeshua the Messiah called us sheep. Um, and sheep, calling people sheep is not a compliment. So everybody has their opinion. And even if 100,000 people have their opinion, okay, what did William Penn say? Let me go back to that slide. Okay, what did William Penn say? Come on. Come on, computer. Uh, he said, it's a very interesting part, and I'm going to bring you on, Rebo. Right is right, even if everyone is against it. And wrong is wrong, even if everyone is for it. See, when light is called dark, and evil is called good, we who keep a standard, Are called evil. Are called evil. What do you think about this scripture, Ravel? And what you're seeing in your daily walk? Because you know you said you'd paint the gay guy's bedroom. Oh yeah. Well, you know, long as he don't want me to participate, no problem. But anyway, that's not a forehead anymore, Rabbi Andrew. That's a five head. <laughs> but yeah, evil is being called good. Check this out. Hillary Clinton walks free and gains all sorts of praise from the Hollywood elites, the media elites, uh, the wealthy donor class. They love her. Uh, Donald Trump, he's investigated day and night by the very people who donated to the Clinton campaign. So you see before your eyes, evil being called good and good being called evil. What I tell people is the President of the United States must be 
the most squeaky clean man who has ever lived for his political enemies to have free reign to investigate him however they want to for two whole years and they can find nothing nothing at all if they investigated me for 15 minutes the kind of man i used to be before i knew the lord it would be not no problem at all to find much worse than they found on any of trump and his associates so we must have the most honest moral president we've had in decades so but nonetheless they call him evil they call him they compare him to hitler and stalin and everything else but not just political look at how things have changed you mentioned william penn well william penn moved out to that area of pennsylvania because he wanted to grow tobacco and he did grow very fine tobacco by the way before i knew the lord i often bought william penn tobacco so but anyway it used to be uh, just simple things were called good and evil now things are so convoluted just in society how many years ago would you have ever believed that homosexuality would have been the sword that the United States fell on? Would you have ever believed the Boy Scouts of America would have chosen not just to have openly homosexual members, children, which is illegal. It's not legal in any state of the United States for an adult to discuss sexuality with a minor. That's still illegal in 50 states. So would you have ever believed they would have gone that route? So evil good, good evil, yeah, that's, that's upon us in a, the most major way you could have ever imagined. It is a really upon us. No, it's actually it's overtaking us because the, the ones that are, hold the truth like us, and that are 100% legalistic. Okay, we might not be able to complete all the law, but we're going to try to do as much of it as possible, not as least as possible. Rabbit, you know, what year did you come to America? 1999. 1999. So in, in your time here in, in America, um, have you seen a disintegration like, you know, especially over the last eight years, the last 10 years. Um, like, you know, sometimes, have you ever been on a roller coaster? Have you ever been on a roller coaster? Oh, yes, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, during the, the, the 80s and, you know, 90s, it was like the climb up, you know, you're, you, you go on the, the roller coaster and you're, you're on the climb up. And then you're, I used to like to sit in the front car. That was my favorite seat. I want to see the madness coming. So you get to the top, you're looking at heaven, and then you're like, ah, uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, you start to slowly pick up speed, and then all of a sudden, boom. That's the way it seems like in um, the last 10 years. What's, what's your summation? Is this, is this scripture correct? Yeah, I mean, I can clearly see that either uh, at the beginning when I started, to work I remember uh, I used to have you know I used to tell my boss I cannot stay more I gotta go to sleep at least four hours because I, I was running almost three ships you know and uh, the drastic change that a lot of a lot of the person at work they, they just living early they just working eight hours and there is no more. You know, you can clearly see the same products, the same way of doing things, but they just everything is getting expensive. They 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 going uh, the money that they used to be set apart for some purpose in there. It just is not enough. We can see the 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 system also. You know, before now we start to to see in the latest. Uh, you know, just recently, since when uh, Mr. Donald Trump, 
you know, when he started uh, to do his job, we, we can see clearly that the numbers change, and it's not only 2 or 3 percent, you know, uh, you can see the 30 percent went up, and uh, let's say in, in, in every job, more opportunities, more jobs, opportunities, but people don't want to do the job. People, they get used to, to the easy stuff. We can clearly see with uh, with with and uh, the uh, with Barack Hussein Obama, people get used to to be comfortable in their place. It's just I don't want to work, and start to to go to welfare and all the things that the government provide to people who who basically they really need it. But we know that people, some people they don't need that. Some people need to do like the Bible. You wanna eat? You have to go and work like we can clearly see in, in the bible about the the fields on in the corners of the field you have to go and do and work but we can see also in isaiah the scripture that you presenting here you know is the evil will get they're gonna call good and we the one who try to enforce the 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 word of god and and be right and be really diligent with following the laws of the land we look bad they told us you're legalistic <laughs> i said thank you <laughs> but as you can clearly see I, i'm i'm sure every person can say that things are changing you know really it's getting better but people don't want to admit that because now people start to pick up their stuff and start to work they realize that they have to work if they want to succeed in this country okay they want to work to succeed in this country now before bringing on martin i want to bring on this next scripture this is the ten commandments as we well know it but i'm going to read a few of them you know number one you're not to have any gods before you hold not to make any graven images not take the name of the Lord's name in vain. Remember the Shabbat. Okay, now let's go to the, the, the cultural issues, five, five through 10, these six ones. There's four, they're, they're five and five, but it's really six and four, okay? Honor your father and mother. See, when you don't know, if you have two daddies or two mommies or two mommies, two daddies, because mommy and daddy got remarried. Then the foundation gets ripped apart. And then thou, thou shall not kill. It's actually thou shall not murder. Okay? We have more murders today. And Chicago is on a record-setting pace this year. And, you know, they're taken away. But why is it on a record-setting pace when the economy is doing well? Jobs are doing well. Okay, the reason is, is because there's no mother, father. There's, once the family is gone, Martin, once the family is gone, once you, once you remove these foundation plugs, and then killing is okay because you got lots of gangs because a gang becomes a family. Then adultery is, I mean, it's just straight up fornication, adultery, then stealing, then bearing, then lying, okay? What we're going to look at today is number six, thou shall not kill, why we need guns. Thou shall not bear false witness or lie and covet. See, when you're teaching six, no, before I go into that, let's, have, let's bring Martin on. Martin, do you see this? This disintegration of each and every of the, the foundation of all the scripture here in the, these Ten Commandments. Basically, it comes down to this. Um, yes, you have to do all 613, but these are the concepts that all, most all of them come from. What do, you, what do you see, Martin? Are you seeing the disintegration in our society, not just here, but uh, in your family in Mexico? Um, what, what's your take on this? And evil will be called good, and good will be called evil. Yeah, definitely. We see the the, uh, the decay of uh, of everything that has to do with God. 
um, uh, the the church has been neglected the, the pulpit wow. they they they've been doing a terrible job it's because they don't have the, uh, the spirituality that they're supposed to have as a leaders and all the the, the faith that we all supposed to have the faith the strong foundation which is in the, in the Torah, in the law of God, the Ten Commandments, which is the, the principles, the base of the whole, you know, of the whole Torah. Once we remove one, it's like removing everything. So the, it's pretty interesting what uh, William Penn say in, he, uh, in his uh, writing that he says right is right and wrong is wrong. The the problem with this is that people don't know what is right and they like more wrong than right so even though they know what is right they're gonna they all, they're gonna go against it so we see the decay of the decay of the of the good principles the moral principles of god and this past week this past three weeks we have an uh, excellent messages about what's going on uh the pulpit is you know, it's being compromised, the pulpit, the family, the schools, the judges. Uh, the other one is the um, uh, the, 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 the priests, the judges, and the police. So everything is it's, it's heading to, to uh, we are in the path of, 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 of destruction, of, of really something big is going to happen. So the question is, who's going to stand for the Lord? Should we should we allow these people to go against the Lord, to talk bad about Him, even the religious people? I mean, we see no moral today. It's, I mean, like uh, Rob Wilf was uh, making a comment about uh, our, the President of the United States. They try to destroy this man. They try, and they even try the, the, the darkness. They try to destroy him. They can't. They can. They cannot find anything on him. They try to destroy other people. Like for instance, I, I was looking at uh, even Ben Shapiro. They try to 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 give him a bad image because they they try to set up. They, they did, I don't know if you guys know that they they did a fake uh, interview with this idiot millennial. Uh, Ocasio, Ocasio, that his last name? Ocasio, Sandra Ocasio, that she's been saying. Uh, Cortez, Cortez, yeah, that they that think was that, funny, that was a funny. They they cut the CRTV. I saw that. That was great. That was that was real. <laughs> wow, you, you see, so so they, they they try to find every little opportunity to 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 bring the wrong message to the public and since the public doesn't know how to discern right from wrong so it's easy to fall so i mean we've seen and, and, and seeing the problem is spreading all over the world i mean you say in a few minutes ago has mexico mexico is the same thing and all over the world i mean you see countries the same thing i was venezuela what, what happened with venezuela because the guy who died, you know, the stupid guy, what's his name, uh, Chavez, he started bringing all these people from, from Iran, and he started making deals with them, and these people, now they're all over Latin America. They, they got bases in all over the world, and they, especially Latin America, they, because he let them in. So everything is a mess in the world. What do we do about it? We have to stand up for whatever is right is right. I'm, I'm agree with uh, William Penn. Right is right. We still have a few people that we still stand up for what is right. You know, and the Ten Commandments are right because they're they divine. They're from God. They came from heaven. There's nothing better than the Ten Commandments. All we have to do is follow them. But the problem is the church has been compromised all this because the church, they keep only nine. And they didn't they don't even keep nine. nine. That's what they say. <laughs> but once they break one, they break them all. So, and then they eat the sandwich, and then when it comes to Christmas and all, they fall. 
So one big happy family. You know what I mean? <laughs> so this is what we got today. But it's 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 getting it's a decay, it's falling down. And it's falling down and, and it's going rapidly and, and fast. The re the reason I'm doing this, I, I saw an interview with um, the very good attorney Alan Dershowitz, who is a constitutional libertarian, as he says. But at the end of the interview, and it was from Andrew Clavin, which was a very good interview because he he, he he does his homework to do interviews, and he asked Dershowitz, "Are we coming out of it? You know, are, are we going to come out of it?" He's like, "No." I don't. I don't think we're we're going to. The reason is is what uh, Martin just said. The public does not know what is right anymore. See, William Penn, when he lived, there was a standard. This was the standard: not to murder, honor your mother and father, don't commit adultery. Did some people do it? Yeah, there wasn't a hundred percent perfection. But there certainly was a lot more of society that that honored these these basic rules, and this is why America was good because we, there was a a foundation. But here in the end, evil will be called good, and good will be called evil. This is why, because nobody has a foundation anymore. Because once you remove the foundation, then you replace the foundation with your religion. And secularism is a religion, okay? The Ortiz woman, you know, is an idiot. Ortiz Cortez, she's an idiot. But she is the pimple that the people are seeing, okay? You know, you might touch your skin, you're like, oh, they got a pimple growing underneath it or something like that. But she is the example of the idiot millennials. But it's because we, the adults didn't teach them these rules and once you remove the foundation of these rules keep the shabbat holy well you know well we're doing sunday okay well they've been doing sunday for 17 you know 1700 years but once you then remove honor your mother and father because you have two daddies two mommies or you know four parents in total then you're killing you know just because you're killing because you want to kill okay then you're committing adultery because you see women are dressed provocatively, their breasts are hanging out, it's summertime, the clothing is see-through, or if they're even wearing any clothing at all, then you're stealing because this is what socialism is. Ben Shapiro got it right. Socialism is stealing other people's stuff, okay? That's one thing he got right. But what he got wrong was he used profanity to say it. So you lost your witness, Benjamin. You know, you use the, the, the sandwich word, and I'm not going to use it word because I don't use those words anymore. This is where you're a child, and you don't know how to apply it because you lost your witness. You're talking about the commandments of God, and then you use profanity. How could you say your Amidah prayers and then use profanity with that same mouth that comes, that spoke praises to God, or spoke the Shema. So once you lose the foundation, Isaiah said, evil will be called good, and good will be called evil. Now, here, now the reason we're talking about this to start off the sledgehammer, so you're watching the remnants called the sledgehammer show. Okay, now let me go to the next news story. Parents deserve the right to know. The RNC passes parents' rights resolution to protect children from radical sex ed curricula. In your public school system, any parent that has that is stupid enough to send their kid to public school, okay, you really gotta be a moron because that the school is a religion. Five hours, six hours a day, they preach the religion. Okay? The Republican National Committee unanimously passed a resolution re recently demanding that state lawmakers do more to protect children from controversial sex ed curricula. To give parents a say in what their kids are taught. Family Research Council reported. Okay, 
because in the public school system, they're they're inundating our children with sexuality, homosexuality, heterosexuality, anal sex, oral sex, everything, and they're 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 they're, they're bombarding our children with their religion. They're bombarding our children with their religion. Okay, uh, the FN, FRC is conservative Christian organization from part of that. Cynthia Dunbar, Virginia's National Committee woman, said so decisions of only sex and need to be put in the hands of the parents. Okay, this is very true. But when you give your children over to the religion, and this is what we're going to keep saying, the culture is a religion. What do you think about this, Ravel, being a former Republican yourself? That's great. They... The RNC puts all kinds of great language into their platform, but will this translate into Republican lawmakers taking action on it? Maybe it will, maybe it won't, because as a Republican Party official, I myself managed to get a lot of great language added to the platform, but... Our lawmakers, our John McCain's, our Lindsey Graham's, our Tom Tillis's, they won't they won't obey the platform. They won't they vote for things that are directly against the Republican platform language. We call that's why we call them rhinos, Republican in name only, because they're Republican, but they don't they don't really support the Republican Party platform. So it's a huge problem. So we'll see if that moves into, we'll see if that moves into um, the actual arena of the schools. My guess is uh, it won't. My guess is that it is just language only. It's like a, it's advertisement for conservative, decent people's vote because. Everything we talk about and everything the politicians push, it all comes down to one thing. There is still a majority in this country that doesn't want this garbage, and they know it. It's not as nearly as big of a majority as it used to be, but there is still a majority that says we ought not be teaching our fourth graders about sex. So fourth graders, we're talking kindergartners with the transvestite yeah. doing transvestite story yeah. time. So still a majority doesn't want this. Everywhere homosexual marriage was put to a vote, it failed. Homosexual marriage failed to get voted into being in San Francisco. San Francisco voted no to homosexual marriage. New Jersey, the place you live, voted no to homosexual marriage. New York City voted no to homosexual marriage. It was imposed by judicial tyrants. So, my, my guess is these guys know there is still at least a small majority that wants what is good as public policy. Now, I don't think there's a big majority at all that's doing good in their private lives, but I think most people in this country still at least have some sense that if, if evil and homosexuality and sexuality are public policy, then we're just not going to have a country. There, no country has ever survived that. Yet, despite what the majority seems to want, uh, it's happening anyway. It's, it's just happening right in the face of the majority. And those, those two things are incompatible. That, this stuff will eventually lead to a civil conflict. Uh, there's, there's no nation in history. If you read the Bible... Any nation in the Bible whose leadership governed against the people and against God, uh, they didn't last. 
Yeah, they didn't last, and this is what the liberals are not. So I don't think they're the majority, but when you're when you're the silent majority, as most of the Germans were as Hitler took over, you know, as the Romans took over, as, you know, just look through history as the Tsars took over, you know, as pogroms happened and all this other stuff happened. Now, they're pushing the religion of sex ed. And I agree with you, Rob, well, that it, it, this is all just talk from the RNC, just to court the, you know, uh, the conservative. You know, we need to push state lawmakers to protect children. What? Now, there's the issue. When, see, we look at the Ten Commandments, Rabbi Ed, and once you remove those commandments of honor your mother and father, but this one is coveted. You know, the, the, the secular religion will say um, we're a couple of billion years old. Now, let's say if we're a couple of billion years old, let's say a billion years ago, um, did we have sex ed? Uh, no, uh, but seems that we still know how to put part A into part B without sex ed. So why do you, what do you think is the impetus, Rav Ed, and why do you think they're trying to get the boys to covet girls and girls to covet boys or even girls to covet girls and boys to covet boys, but they're, they're teaching you should have sex. In their religion, they're teaching doesn't married mar matter if you're married. Um, so this is what is being thrown down the, the, the children's throat. And the biggest part why the RNC is doing this is that the parents have no say in the religion of the school system. Now that's what we got to keep saying. We need freedom from religion. The school should be teaching science, math, okay, reading, because most kids don't know the reading, writing, reading, writing, and arithmetic. That's what the school should be teaching. It should be teaching history, okay, not revisionist history. I mean, if you want to have two points of view, that's fine. But the school need not teach stuff that doesn't have any place in a public school, but it's their religion. What do you think there, Rav Ed? I think also this has to do a lot with, uh, as you were mentioning, Rav Will, were mentioning that all this coming back to to the to the to the parents to not do their job. Uh, but once one thing is for sure, I mean, if you don't know what to teach, uh, how are you gonna teach the kids? So you, basically, we have to. We have to keep doing our job uh, the best way, like like Ben going, keep doing, you know, try to spread the word as much as he can. Remember the Lord, Yeshua says he knocked the door for each person. If, and, but not many, not many people open the door to him. And this is also not, nothing new, says Shalom. You know, but to go to the point, to allow your kids that some trans sexual or go in the kindergarten and read histories and then the main point for them is yeah you can you can be everything you can be involved in everything we are the same no we're not we have a different parts and uh from the beginning god create different you know uh, with the with the purpose to at the end become one again but once when the body starts to get weak and when the parents not they not willing to to do their job just a simple example i just took my my family to walk and i uh, i saw a mother with the dollar she's not taking you know she's not sharing time with her little daughter she's taking selfies uh, and the phone. So, what is the the notion of to be a parent? You know what this little girl are gonna learn? Just all about herself. You know, it's only me and me, and that's it. I don't care about the rest. That's what the doctrine that they putting in those kids right now. 
uh, is really scared because these people are the ones who make our job more difficult. But when you, when you do what is right, remember, the Word of God talks about the remnant. The remnant is going to be just a little portion. It's going to be a little portion that is going to have a lot of trials. We can be one of those, part of that, that portion. Because everybody is uh, blamed to to the people who's doing what is right. Like, follow the commandments. Not, notice the difference of the commandments, you know. Uh, the Lord said it's really strict. They do not bring, do not put any gods in front of my face. You know, when, when you talk like lightly to the to the people, you know, when they said, uh, you, you're not, uh, it's, you're gonna, it's gonna be bad for you if you don't follow the commandments. No, they should have said, if you don't follow what God says, there is a door that has leads you to, to hell. And that's where you gonna, where, where you're gonna go. But we still, people are still afraid. That's the Lord, uh, the Lord says he's gonna protect you. As long you follow his ways, and he's gonna put the word in your mouth for for you to talk. So the punch what they should do, they should go and stand up. First of all, if they can take the kids out of the school right away, right away. If not, go in the school and say, and be strong. Say, I don't want you, a gay person, to be basically interaction with my kid. You know, it's really bad, but. They don't have that strength that the Lord provides when you follow His commandments and when you apply and when you be obedient to the Lord. But it, it's not just homosexuality. It, it's all sexuality. Like they're teaching in these, these this sex ed curricula. You know what I call it? The Lord gave me as you were talking. The chocolate chip cookie, potato chip meal versus vegetables okay you put a bowl you put a plate of chocolate chip cookies along with potato chips in a room with five-year-olds and you put a bowl of tomatoes carrots and celery sticks you know all, all organic organic but uh um celery organic Carrots, Martin, organic tomatoes. What do you think is going to be left over after, and you say the, after the, the five minutes? You have ten kids in a room, and <laughs> they drive in with a potato chip. Okay? Now, this is what they're doing. They're putting the, the cookies and the potato chips. Oh, you can, don't worry, you can try sex. It's okay. And this is how you put on a, uh, a rubber, and this is um, this is how you put your penis in another man's behind, you know. And girls, you know, you can do this. You can strap on this, and and or if you want to have group sex, I mean, you should see this curricula. And you know, this is a cal but it's it's a potato chip. Martin, do you like potato chips? Uh, I know I think of course um, with some guacamole Ooh, the best <laughs> do, you, do you like cookies not really not really uh, sometimes <laughs> okay sometimes now does your son Benjamin like cookies yeah you know all kids they do they they, they love sugar does your daughter Leah or your grandchildren uh, like potato chips? They do. They're Mexican. <laughs> uh, now, if I were to put a bowl of vegetables, um, like carrots, yeah. celery, tomato, and potato yeah. chips in a different plate, what would be eaten? The potato chips. They don't like they don't like vegetables. <laughs> I don't know, there's something going on with the vegetables. I think you started all. <laughs> yeah. Well, Robert, you know, I think I was thinking in you know, we 
do the commentary in this portion that uh, we see the evil behind all this, you know, I mean, the agenda that these people has, I mean, they, they, they try to destroy society. Um, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, they, they, God destroyed the cities because of sexual deviation and and all that stuff that it was so disgusting before God, you know, the, the sodomy, all the homosexuality and Gomorrah, all the sexual perversion, that's what they try to do with the kids, you know, they try to destroy society. And the, and, and the worst is like, uh, I agree with Rave, what he was saying that uh, the parents, what, what are they doing about it? It's like, you know, oh, that's fine, you know, that's okay. I mean, they don't, they don't like to take care of their own kids. You know, they, they bring the kids to pot. Sometimes, you know, believe me, so much boring in my little apartment here. Sometimes I say, you know, I'm going to put you back in the public school, uh, give me my, my, my space and my time. But you, but you see, that's what these people think and they do. I mean, they, 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 they got kids, but they, it gets to a point that they don't take the kids anymore. And they just say, you know, let these people to educate my own kids. So whatever comes in for the for the public schools, the new programs and whatever like this, right here, the supposed to be sex education it has nothing to sex education. What do you need to educate a little kid? You you pervert in the mind, you know, from 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 the youth, from the kids. Mm -hmm. And this is this is serious, man. This is I mean I think this is serious because God is in wrath. It's growing more in in. And we're gonna be seeing some amazing things from from the Lord, which people are gonna they will not take. We getting ready as a body of Messiah. We getting ready by keeping His commandments, by sanctifying our lives and being holy, and you know. But these people, they don't you know they don't realize these things, and it this is bad. I mean, this is like. I mean, they started with the new generation. I mean, can you imagine how these kids, what it's going to be later? I mean, they, they, I, Satan is doing his job real well. He's doing his job very, very well. Well, it, it's, the relig it's the religion of them, you know, where we fight, you know, that's this is what we got to start calling it. It's your religion. Freedom from religion is a religion, okay? And once you remove the, the foundation of sexuality, now we move on to the next story. In the Torah, um, and I spelled races wrong, so don't send me an email. Uh, <laughs> okay? There are no races. Jehovah said to Noah in Bereshit 7, come into the ark and you and your household have seen um, that you alone in the generation of righteous before. There was Noah, his wife, and Shem, Ham, and Yafet, and their three wives. Okay, and then the Lord flooded the earth. Okay, so there are no races because we come from Adam and Eve, Adam and Chava, okay? We come from them, and then the Lord flooded the earth with Noah, okay? But once you think there's races just because somebody's skin has a little bit more melanin in it, okay? We all have the DNA, and DNA has been proven by science recently that DNA has memory. DNA has memory. It's a very intensive study, a very interesting study. Okay, but here we're going to hit two two uh, areas. Okay, now one of the things that's going on because our society has no foundation, because once you remove the laws of God, then everybody was going to do what's right in their own eyes. Okay, then everybody's going to do what William Penn said. Uh, we can't go along with that. This black nurse says a cop racially profiled her, okay, and she puts this big thing on Facebook and slams a police officer. So the, one of the things that I think it's the best thing out there, especially for the, the police officers, for good and for bad cops, I believe that there's more good cops than bad cops, and if, you're, you're, if somebody pulled me over because I, I got a big beard, I'm going to talk to them about the Lord, okay? Make that opportunity to say to that cop, you may die one day because there's so many shootings. But here, this black nurse says cop racially profiled her. Okay, she goes on and on and on about this big Facebook 
posting, gets thousands and thousands and thousands of likes. And then the, the police officer and the police department, the, 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 the chief, Ravel, the chief, you know, reviewed the, the, the footage because as soon as he pulled her over, the dash cam is, is rolling, okay? The body cams for the cops are the greatest thing because we live in a society that has no morals. In the end of days, evil will be called good and good will be called evil, okay? So this woman, Saria, I think that's what, the way you say, Calhoun, black in the late 20s, the cute police officer, Rachel profiled her, and friends during the traffic stop, Lee Summit, Midora. According to the Kansas City stop, okay? So she said the cop was threatening them with her gun. He was rude. He did all this nasty stuff to her. And then the the, the police department rolls out the, the dash cam. And lo and behold, the woman, the black nurse, she's not black. She's got more melanin. There are no races. This woman that's supposed to be a nurse, supposed to be educated, you know, her story is found out to be totally false. But when you remove the Ten Commandments, where it says, Thou shall not lie, and you want to know where the liars are? The liars are with the homosexuals in hell. Okay? So, Miss Calhoun, you better repent to God before you die because he's going to play this at your trial in Messiah's court, and you're going to hell because you're liars. Go to hell. That's in Revelation 20. That's in the New Testament for those who are spiritual life. What do you think about this part, Ravel? About the, once again, the dash cam showing the truth because the picture, the sound does not lie. So what do you think about this woman lying and then, you know, about the whole incident on Facebook, then she deletes it, but praise, you know, they already had her copied it. What do you think about this story? Well, the Word of God in the Torah says that if someone falsely accuses somebody else, his neighbor, then whatever punishment that person intended for the one they accused is the punishment they get when they're discovered. So, I wonder how she'd like that. I assume that she intended for that person to be harmed at his work and be ostracized publicly. So perhaps that should be done to her as punishment for her false accusation. So what this is coming down to is something we've tried down here for a long time, but we can't get our lawmakers to go along with it. There are so many false accusations of rape, abuse, assault, racism. What we want is for our lawmakers to institute a false accuser website, a hotline. You know, like a child sex abuser is forced to register with the sheriff and be put on a website that is maintained by the state. So, you, you know, you can put in their name into this database and it'll come up that they have sexually abused children. Well... I think anyone who makes a false accusation should also be put into a database. So if somebody's going to say, go out on a date with a woman who's falsely accused other men of rape, or say somebody's going to do business with a man who has falsely accused other people of, say, racism or stealing or whatever else, I think there should be a database where these people's names are stored and they're forced to register wherever they go live from that point forward. And, and I don't register. think we got enough hard drive space for that. Well, I don't know. Google has a pretty big hard drive space. They've got all your emails and texts. But they should maintain some sort of a database for these false accusers to warn other folks. You could just type in somebody's name and there you go. Last year, this chick filed a false report that the cop was racist and nasty to her. And so, hey, you might not want to, you know, if she's asked you out to go to the movies and you're white, you're a white dude, you might not want to go because she might get mad at you and accuse you of the same thing. 
So what do you think of my false accuser database? I think most of America will be in your false accuser database because Yeshua said uh, in hell, uh, oh, that's where the liars are, and 75% of the world is going to hell. Um, what do you think of uh, Rav Will's uh, thing there, Rav Ed? What do you think of the database? What do you think of this nurse making up this whole story in the vid in the video? I mean, the, the dash cam? Awesome. I mean, you can watch. Now, if you're going to put the database there, Rav Rav Will, if there's a video of it, there's got to be, that's got to be right next to Miss Calhoun's name. Rav Ed, what do you think? I think that is a, a, enough proves because you cannot you cannot change i don't know you you work in the industry too i mean there gotta be a really uh job a perfect job to to try to you know and try to make that kind of little bit fake and all that but now uh, you don't need more proofs than that you know all, all what is providing in there is just proof for what we're living and in, in our days it just proves that we're could be many, many different, you know, to show to show moral, to show um, uh, what is this for? To show um, respect, basically. All the 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 foundation uh, is getting missing already uh, to cover it. You know, it's it's most people don't realize, but when you cover, it, it's not just meaning just to cover a woman. They can cover many things. You know, uh, I wanna I wanna have power. But I, I, I want to get more than him. If he is going to the employment, I gonna, I gonna be like that. <laughs> you know, the, so extremism. I mean, if you, if you start to really think about it, when the, the word of God can take in many ways, that's why He leaves us His word to for us to correct our ways, to remember where we where we came from, and to act once again, like I said, uh, in the right way to act. To follow him, to be an example, to 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 show the light and the shalom for for the people who really, are in some point, they miss. I mean, they they they, they lost. Why? Because uh, we we can clearly see, uh, you know, phones and all that. And you, I remember you also talk about the the difference. But I I think this is another a different subject different types when the people watch TV and when they watch the phone, I mean, the, the, the damage in their brain. I mean, and all this product that we have in here is because of that type of society. I mean, there is no other, no other words to... But, but just, just to outright lie. I mean, this has, shows that you, you know, if we go back to the Ten Commandments. This show, you know, what, 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 were the, 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 what was five through ten? Let me bring it up on the screen because most people won't know them. So you need to read them. Honor your father, your father and mother. Okay. I guess mom and dad are not there. Okay. If they are there, then they're not teaching what is right. Thou shalt not kill. Miss Calhoun, you killed his person spiritually. You called his character into question. Um, you stole his honor. When the videotape or the recording, videotape shows my age, um, uh, you stole his honor. And we'll go to Martin next. You bore false witness. You're lying. I think we should throw you in jail for that. If you're found out, you, something should happen. See, this is why the law, the, Jehovah made laws. So if you stole, you had to return what you stole. 100% of what you stole plus 20%. And if you didn't have the, the, the full thing of what you stole plus the 20%, you can be a slave for up to six full years. Six full years. That means seven years. And on the seventh year, they have to let you go. Then you see, this is why the law is good. But when you just say, I'm sorry, or you delete your Facebook post, you know, what about all the time and resources that the police department? Had to investigate. You know, even if it was an hour or two just to watch the video and go, Psh. you know, this lady's a lying piece of crap. Okay? You know, we should shame you. But since you did, you have no honor, shaming you is, you know, you know, my father used to say, a good name is better than a p the piece of paper it's wrote, written on. When people think of you uh, 
with honor and dignity, Martin. What what do you think we should do to Miss Calhoun? What 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 do you think we should do to to you know stop this crap? Maybe start beating people and you know, ripping their noses off their faces, farting in their, their general direction. What? <laughs> Sometimes you want to do something like that, <laughs> but it's it, it's a big problem, culture problem that. Um, uh, they come up with these new groups, uh, light, Black Lives Matter, you know, and they try to hide their their hate towards, and, and let's say, why not, to, to white people. I mean, I'm, I'm from Mexico, and, you know, but I don't, I don't see my, my the Mexican people acting like that. I mean, like, you know, I don't understand. This is a very deep culture problem with this uh, group of people um, and everything falls down to the main thing of the program that we we're talking today they don't know what's right they don't know how to discern right from wrong Be why because they don't have to, they don't want to listen to god's word the torah the lack of knowledge of god's torah jesus jesus it's love he says it's love. I forget my brother seven times, seven times seven, so he's gonna forgive me for everything I do. That's the message of the message of the message of the church. Everything based on love, no justice, just love. And and with all these problems with the culture that we have today, you know, they make everything one little thing into hate. And against the police, making lies, but you know they realize that the police have the cameras on them. I mean, they they gonna pay. They have to pay the consequence of the, the mistake. I mean, you lie, you're gonna pay. You get caught and lie, you're gonna pay. You see, but the people don't know how to. How to I mean, it's lack of knowledge. It's totally. It's like. Behaving worse like than animals, kind of living in a jungle with no law. But it's lack of foundation. It's lack of foundation, yeah. Because I bet you if we ask one of these persons um, to explain to us why they feel like that, why they feel this hate, why they, you know, towards other group, they will, I mean, they will not tell you exactly why? I mean, it's it's all confusion. It's all things that they put them in their heads. Too much information from TV and for other peoples, and and make lives big. When we put the foundation of God in our lives, Ten Commandments, and we come into the fear of, of the Lord Yeshua, because see, this is the problem with church. What I'm thinking, I was reading this portion in this book today. It says that. Uh, it's not only about relationship with Yeshua, but it's about a matter of death and life. Because Yeshua is going to judge. He's going to judge accordingly for, you know, from our behavior. People just want the relationship, but they don't have the fear of Yeshua. They don't have the fear of, if I do wrong, I'm going to pay. Everything's going to fall on me, you know. So they... They don't know how to discern right from wrong. That is, that's it. That's that's what it is. And they call good evil and evil good. That's 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 the plain truth that we live in today. Well, you're listening to the remnants call the sledgehammer show. This is show number 231. Right, wrong is right, and right is wrong. We're gonna go on to our our last topic for to the show. No commercial break this uh, week. Okay. In the Torah, uh, not in the Torah, I mean, uh, this should have been Tanakh, uh, the Psalm 11, verse 2 and 3. See how the wicked are drawing their bows and setting their arrows on, on the string to shoot from the shadows and honest men. The foundations are destroyed. What can the righteous do? Our last story, our last topic, okay, is what's going on down in Florida. Hundreds of guns seized under Florida red flag law. It violates the Constitution. See, what, 
what's happened after the shooting in Florida, you know, that started the whole hog, uh, little boy, stupidity, little, didn't even go to the school. Um, the lawmakers quickly uh, made a law with red flag. And so a judge who has no um, uh, ability, you know, doesn't have a psychological degree, will just hear some, well, we, we're worried about this person, okay? And then if, let's say uh, we're believers, we're followers of the Torah, and we believe that, you know, we talk to God. Well, my brother thinks he talks to God. He's crazy, but he's got a gun. And I fear for my life. Okay, so now they're seizing all the guns. Don't do it, okay? Because we're a non-moralistic society. Okay, Rav El, Rav Will, and Rav Ed, and Rabbi in Training Martin, give us your last two shekels on this story. Well, see, what's so dangerous about the Florida law, and this is what I told you guys about the Republicans, Listen, the Republicans couldn't repeal Obamacare. They didn't have the guts to do that. They barely held their ground in a lot of places on a basic human right, gun, the right to be armed and defend oneself. They barely held their ground on that. So in Florida, they completely caved. And what makes the Florida law so bad, so much worse, believe it or not, than even New Jersey's laws, is it doesn't have to be somebody that knows you. A state agency can be concerned about you. The 400 or so that they have seized are not coming from a neighbor being concerned. It's coming from a state agency looking over their Facebook posts or their Twitter posts or whatever. So... Technically, you know, Donald Trump has Mar-a-Lago in Florida. Some of his Twitter posts could get his guns in Florida confiscated because it, it can be done completely by the state. No one even has to accuse you. I predict that that law will not stand down there for very long. And I also predict that there will be no red flag laws in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, or states like that. I think a red flag law passed in North Carolina would immediately cause uh, a civil disobedience in this state. That would be that would be terrible. But anyway, these laws are bad news. You hear these red flag laws; uh, they're terrible. And what they are is a symptom that the Republicans are not your saviors. They have no guts. They're, they're, they're liars is what they are. But in a society that, you know, can openly lie about a police officer when none of this really happened, a society that all we're doing is teaching about sexuality, so a kid goes and rapes a girl or a girl rapes a boy or whatever. When the society has no morals, those of us who have morals that are standard and the foundation of it, then we need to stand our ground. Two minutes. The most important thing and that would be to ask uh, why we don't learn from the history. You know, we can clearly see through the, the Bible, that is a book of uh, many trials that the people of Israel pass, you know, nothing different than than that we is, have, is going on right now. As we said at the beginning, you know, Shlomo says nothing is new under the sun, but it's lack of uh, information, lack of uh, knowledge, in every aspect of 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 the life there should be those leaders first of all as as the lord command they should be writing the torah or learning from themselves for them to be able to to correct the people and to guide people and we have to be aware with all this about guns 
and all that. You know, you have to defend the, yourself. You have the rights to defend yourself. Just don't give up so easy. Fight until the end. You know, how blessed is the one who hold to the end, says Yeshua. So, I encourage the people to be, to open your eyes to the truth and start to seek about God. He's the only one who's going to guide us. Mr. Martin? Yeah, this is serious, uh, serious things happening right now. But it's, uh, it's, um, uh, I agree with Rob, Will and Robert that um, um, it, it happened before. Don't forget that uh, Hitler, he did this. He disarmed people and and he took the control over the the, the whole nation. Uh, that's what the the liberals are trying to do, and they openly breaking the Constitution of the United States. I mean, the Second Amendment is part of the Constitution. They don't care. They, 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 they try to, to get rid of it. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard, but it's just the beginning. So it's just like they're showing us what they want to do. So in other words, we, they're telling us to get ready for something that is coming. Since um, let's not forget history because it happened before and it's going to happen again. So... Yeshua has given us a discernment, discernment to, to see things from before happening. But this discernment is only, it's acquired by the people who's with him, studying his word, studying Torah, day and night, praying, keeping the Shabbat. This is the only way you can get the discernment for things that are about to happen. Otherwise, you're going to be living in, you're living in a fantasy, in the, in the fantasy island. That's what most people do live, in a fantasy island. And they're okay, you know, they say things happen every day, nothing happened. That's okay. Yeah. We get it, while, while we're getting ready as a body of Messiah, they're not getting ready. Yeshua's coming with power and glory, and they're going to leave, they're going to live behind so it's still time. I mean, we see all these things. Get ready. Don't forget history. Because the saying is, whoever forget history is doomed to repeat it. Is that right? Did I say it right? <laughs> it's doomed to repeat it. And that's what people don't know. They don't, they don't know these things. So my concern is for the people that, that don't, don't know Yeshua. Uh, no, Jesus, if you don't know Yeshua, Jesus means nothing. He's not the same character. Amen. What kind of uh, donuts does Tattoo like? Be plain, be plain, be plain. Yes, we are living in the, the liberals are living in a fantasy. The religion of the fantasy. Because once you remove those ten pillars, then every man will do what's right in his own eyes. Every woman will do what's right in her own eyes. They'll lie, they'll cheat, they'll steal. A lot that we talked about in this show, from sex education to lying to confiscation of weapons to protect yourself. You're going to need those weapons because we live in a society that's spiraling out of control. We say one thing, our leaders say one thing, but they do not have the, the chutzpah to follow through. What you need is to get in a relationship with Jehovah, with his son, Messiah, Yeshua. You need to get your head deep into the word of God and start following the commandments. You've been listening to the Remnants Call, the Sledgehammer Show. I bid you an amen, an amen, an amen. Shalom! Shalom! This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnants Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. 
you can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture. Truly, the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend a day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our king praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there, because Shabbat is so special to him There is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close the Shabbat together with the reading of the new week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and Biblical Holy Day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number 
is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.